Hi you guys, hello and welcome. I hope everybody's doing very, very well. I have a really beautiful plant here that I wanted to show you guys. Um, this is Incarvillia della Valle, also known as the Hardy Gloxinia. And yeah, let's get into it. It's a really, really beautiful plant. So this over here is our buddy Incarvillia. Uh, I'm seeing this kind of come up in garden centers a little more often than it used to and that makes me super happy because now you can actually buy the full plants as opposed to the tubers. I'll get a little bit more into the tubers later. So what makes Incarvillias so special is that they have this really beautiful almost fern-like pinnate um, foliage. It almost reminds me of like um, a desert rose or something like that or even like a fern. Although this is in the Bignoniaceae family, or the Trumpet Vine family, it's definitely not a fern. It has these beautiful, almost orchid-like... By the way, my rabbit plays with that beer, I promise that we're not heavy drinkers here. My rabbit's just around the corner over there. <laughs> it's just his little toy, so just ignore that. But yeah, um, this is a beautiful, almost orchid-like flower. It has, you know, these five kind of gorgeous petals. Uh, this is actually, I think, why it's called Hardy Gloxinia, is because it has um, a resemblance to the Gisneriad Gloxinia houseplant, which is actually a very far away, quite unrelated plant. Uh, Incarvillias are native to China. They're native to parts of southeastern and southeastern central China. So I think Yunnan, uh, Sichuan, especially the southern parts of Sichuan, as well as uh, Hainan, the island of Hainan, going down into northern Vietnam too, I believe. Incarvillia is a perennial. It is somewhat hardy. I apologize, I don't know what the value is in Fahrenheit, but it's hardy to about negative three, negative four Celsius. Unless it's in a more protected area, you can get away with having it in a little bit of a cooler area. Incarvillia has this really, really cool um, taproot that I would show you, but I don't want to um, dig this up right now. But it's really interesting. It looks almost like kind of a like a carrot almost. It's a really deep taproot and you can buy them bare root. Uh, the best time of year to plant the bare root um, kind of tubers is usually March or April depending on how early your season is. Here in southern Canada it would be April if you're living in the UK, April. Uh, southern parts of the states, you're talking more March. If you're in like the extreme south states, maybe even February. It's a pretty fast grower. It doesn't get much taller than this. So its mature height, including flowers, is only about two and a half feet at maximum. It has these really cool capsule um, seed capsules that produce upwards of 30 seeds per capsule. Uh, the seeds typically emerge in early August. Here, I'll show you. The seeds are quite reminiscent of like hollyhock seeds, if you're familiar with those. Uh, they're, you know, just kind of like these little discs that are kind of like a couple millimeters wide. Uh, these guys are self-fertile, so if you want to get seed off of your Incarvillias, you really only need one. Incarvillias come in different colors, but they do tend to kind of follow this general color scheme. So they're, they're usually pink or purple or white. Incarvillia are not very fragrant. They might have a really, really mild like floral note early in the morning, but for the most part, they're not fragrant. They produce these beautiful clusters. This is what the new blooms look like when they settle in. They have this beautiful, almost starfish-like kind of uh, apical tip. And you know, if you deadhead each individual flower, there's a high chance that you're gonna get even more sprouting here. An interesting thing about Incarvillia, because they like being planted deeply, is sometimes you'll even get blooms that just emerge right from the ground, which is pretty cool. This leads me to my next point. These guys are absolute slug magnets. If you have issues with slugs in your garden, I 10 out of 10 definitely recommend putting down hay or straw or copper, some sort of a barrier to get the slugs to stay away from these guys. Uh, if you look at other articles online, it sounds like other people have issues with slugs on these plants as well. Um, you can also get thrips, like the garden thrips, kind of right at the bases of the plants. And it looks like we have one right here. Thankfully, they have a lot of natural enemies, so they shouldn't be a problem for you. When the flower buds get to about this stage, you're going to want to just pull them out. You know, just kind of like a quick pull. That is how I would deadhead if you want to keep the bloom capsule to preserve seeds for next year. Otherwise, you can just, you know, kind of twist it off like that. 
And my rabbit came to say hi. He <laughs> really loves eating these guys. So, um, yeah, this is Incarvillia de la Valle. So a little bit of nomenclature. It's named after a guy by the name of Père uh, Dincavi, who was a French botanist. Sorry, there's a train going by. <laughs> Uh, who did a lot of, or sorry, a French missionary who did a lot of work in Sichuan, China. And the Delavai, the Delavai part, uh, is also named after a guy named Pierre Delavay, who was also a French missionary who went down into China in, I believe, the 1700s and uh, did a whole bunch of botanical studies as well. Uh, you may recognize the name Delavai from the tree peonies because there's a type of tree peony called Peonia Delavai. I believe there's also a magnolia too. So, if my phone will ever focus, one thing I will say is these guys kind of resent having water on their leaves, and they definitely do like more well-draining soil. <laughs> Sorry, I got a bug on me. <laughs> uh, they like soil that's a little bit more on the sandy side. They definitely do like drying in between waters. Uh, it's more of a heat-loving plant from what I've seen. In the winter, you have a couple options. You can keep them in ground. They definitely do like being dry in the winter. They do not like, you know, wet feet when it's cold outside. And you can also lift them up much like you would like a gladiolus tuber or like a dahlia if you want to put them in a garage or whatever. Uh, I would recommend storing them in straw because sand tends to be a little heavy and can break the tubers. Or you could um, put them in like little, you know, kind of paper bags. In Carvilia, typically will bloom in uh, June and July. Sometimes if you're lucky, if you're in a colder zone, uh, you might get more blooms in August. Definitely not an edible plant. Uh, it's non-toxic to dogs, cats, rabbits, etc. However, I wouldn't recommend planting this next to little children because I'm not sure what the toxicity is to humans. But yeah, see, there's actually a bee right here, so they're definitely pollinator friendly. Uh, don't get stung if you go by them, but that's so cute. Uh, they're also hummingbird friendly, because they have this beautiful trumpet shape. So this is Incarvillia de la Valle. It's not a heavy feeder at all. It does well in poor soils. Um, it will bloom throughout the season, so if all of these blooms are faded, you don't see any more blooms coming up. If you cut them right by the rosette a couple of inches up, you'll actually periodically get more and more blooms. So as I was saying with the seeds earlier, yes, of course, you can propagate this by seed, but there's a chance that it's a hybrid variety and your flower color is not gonna come true and you're gonna be surprised with usually a white flower later on. The seeds are a little bit painful to, um, to germinate. They're very slow from what I've tried. So the best way to divide is by basal divisions. They produce these really cool rosettes. Great, now there's a plane going by. <laughs> So you can just put like a pitchfork or a spade here. Try not to break the taproot because the taproot's, you know, a few inches long. And then you can just replant those in midsummer on a cool day and they should do well for you. So Incarvillia is one of those heritage plants that is very long lived under perfect conditions, much like a peony or a daylily. If you find a place that it really loves, it tends to do very well. In the winter, especially if you're kind of in one of those northern zones, I would 100% recommend uh, mulching with a bit of straw or hay, or even grass clippings of a couple inches, because they do tend to frost heave, and um, although the majority of the tuber will be fine, the eyes of the tubers are right underneath the base of the soil. So you're going to want to have that extra layer, you know, of protection in case it gets frosty and the soil gets waterlogged and then you get frost heaving which spells the end for your incarvilia. So I hope that this answers some of your guys' questions if you had any. Really really beautiful plant. Uh, it's got this really interesting mid-ribbing on the bottom. Almost kind of like a gray almost glaucous appearance on the bottom. Really beautiful. This is one of those plants that acts somewhat like an ephemeral like a poppy for example meaning that if you have it coming back in the garden, it might take a while to come back. So don't dig it up and don't, um, you know, put something over top of it until you're absolutely sure that it won't uh, come back because sometimes they are a little late to erupt in the spring, sometimes not doing very much at all until late May. So that's Incarvillia. Incarvillia is gorgeous. It has this really spreading kind of beautiful foliage. I know that's going to be my thumbnail because this is just incredible. 
a uh, very tropical look and you know what even in warmer areas it does well uh, without being too rambly if you have like southern exposure really really bright light there's a possibility that it'll burn the tips of the leaves a little sometimes they'll go a little yellow sometimes they'll go a little bit purple if you do want to fertilize this guy uh, I want to recommend like liquid feed diluted fertilizer it definitely doesn't need much it is prone to fertilizer burn but yeah have a great day you guys i have a lot going on in the garden here right now it's quite beautiful i'm gonna get so many grapes this year so i'm so excited about that i'll try my darndest to make more videos i know that i haven't been making a whole lot of videos on this channel now but i have some interesting things to talk about so have a great day you guys and as always stay blessed